when you hear something like that, oh, what does that no mean pressure. to you? Yeah. <laughs> it is so good to see y'all. This movie, I've, I've shared with all three of you, is incredible. I felt like I was watching Ferris Bueller for the first time. When you're watching something iconic mm. before it's iconic, but you know it's going to be iconic, um, it's Are incredible. Are you old enough to have seen Ferris Bueller before it was iconic? No. No, but I was old enough. <laughs> but I but I watched Ferris Bueller and I knew you were yeah. like, that's a good movie. This is this is something cool. And then you know, ah, as a kid, okay. you're like, eh, who I knows? just thought yeah. you were like, you know, like yes, I was a, a unicorn. Of all things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, wow. yes. Wow. Um, speaking of that premiere, though, I coaxed Miss Tina over off of the carpet mm -hmm. to talk to me a little bit about um, why she was there and what she was excited about, and mm -hmm. she shared with me that she sees a lot in you that she sees in her eldest daughter, mm. Beyonce. Mm. And I said, can I tell her that? Are you okay with my <laughs> She was like, yeah, I mean, I, I just, there, there is so much of her that I see in Zendaya and she's just really starting to blossom in a whole nother level. What does that, when you hear something like that, oh, what does that no mean pressure. to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I'm, I was honored that she took her time to come and, and support, and their their family has always been so kind and so generous with their time and, and loving and supportive, and so that means so much to me, and yeah. obviously um, high praise from from her. Right. Um, but but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm honored and and also I'm like. Little, little nervous, little pressure there. I'm like, wait like, a minute. The people are watching. I'm like, oh my God. They're watching, they're um, watching. But yeah, no, a, lot, a immense amount of gratitude. Yeah, I mean, I hope that you all are feeling that. This movie, this film, this project, I mean, you're also a producer on it. It's got to feel good to have it out. Well, almost have it out. <laughs> Um, and people re be responding to it the way that they are, right? I mean, the of course there is the, the love triangle of it all. But there's also the tennis of it all. There is the the uh, a queen of it all. <laughs> I think I read Josh. You said something to the effect of like because, and I love that there is not one that the it was the dupe of the century, and I mean that in a good way yeah. with the trailer. Mm. Not one sex scene in this film, mm. and it doesn't. It's not lacking because of it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It mm. was. It's a really beautiful thing, really crafted beautifully. But you said that the tennis in this movie feels like the intensity of like a sex scene, like it, the, the back and forth of the tennis was like the the uh, intimacy, the physicality that you felt it in it. It feels like the release, because I think it's like so much in this film of like nearly, and there's so much of like them taking, you know, like, and a lot of the scenes are like mini tennis matches. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the dialogue that Justin wrote is a kind of like back and forth and people trying to undermine each other. And you would be doing these scenes together and they'd be like, oh my God, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. And then it's like, oh no, she's winning. <laughs> or like, you know, whatever it was, it, it feels like a back and forth, like a tennis match. Yeah. And so I think when you have the actual tennis uh, matches, it feel, that's almost like the release. Yeah. So I think it kind of represents that, that, that the sort of sex scenes in the movie. Yeah, no, I know exactly what yeah. you mean. And I thank you for putting it better than I did. <laughs> but yeah. like it is it is it's really cool to also see, right? And it's it it was cool to see as a as a uh, uh, queer myself, it was cool to see two guys inherently involved in some aspect of this um, queer experience, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, in that motel scene. Mm -hmm. You talked to me about it being like one of the last things you guys shot. And there being like a, you know, in the, in the day that there was like, okay, we, okay, now we got to gear back up for this, for the intensity of this. I'm, I'm curious about chemistry, how you were able to, through even work with intimacy coaches and things like that, how you were able to get to a place where you were safe and you felt good enough and strong enough to like embark on that. Yeah. Well, by the time we actually got uh, to that part in the scene, we all really realized we hated each other. <laughs> And, um, just had to get it done. Yeah. Get it done. Yeah, it Five, it. six, yeah, seven, so yeah. just like, oh, man. <laughs> it was tough, man. Was yeah. it tough? Absolutely. Hard for you? Hardest thing. <laughs> no, uh, the truth is we, we got to Boston. We had six weeks of um, prep before we actually started shooting. Yeah. So we spent those six weeks uh, doing our tennis training. 
working out physically, getting ready, bef and actually going through the script with Justin Karitskis, who's the screenwriter, yeah. being in the room with Luca and the three of us just sitting down and kind of just doing script work, uh, doing okay. scene work. just Digging talk, into it. Yeah, doing the work, you know? And so we would just do that. And, at, and what that also afforded us was the ability just to get to know each other as coworkers, mm -hmm. uh, just as people, which allowed us to, and you know, we talked about this now and kind of realizing I think more so in hindsight is like our own insecurities going into it. And that's with every project, you know, you show up to work, it's the first day, your imposter syndrome kicks in. You're yeah. like, oh my God, I'm gonna be the worst thing in this thing. Right? <laughs> right. You know, I'm, I don't deserve to be here kind of a thing. Mm. But the truth, you know, we all felt that way. And it's kind of nice when you can just, um, when you can actually just like be honest about that and mm. get out of your own way. And <sighs> that's the biggest thing I think with what we do is just forcing yourself to be honest with your yourself in this way of like, how can I just afford to get out of my own way? Because right. your and own- And show, how can I just show up? Yeah, just show up. How can I actually just show and up? And it takes a lot of like mental um, fortitude and discipline to yeah. just be present mm -hmm. and let go, let go of your own ego and mm -hmm. things and just like realize like, it's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. just a movie. Well, I'll tell you, it's I'll funny. I'll also say, just to cut in there, yeah, yeah. they're also really lovely people. No. Right. Why are you lying? <laughs> I'm not. You're going to accept this compliment today, Mike Feist. Damn it. But they are. And so when you walk into a situation, like you're saying, you feel these nerves and this excitement, but also just kind of terrified to right, take right. on a new challenge. And you realize that the people that you're working beside are also lovely people and are kind and it are like going to have your back. All and the like. Difference. It, it changes the game and it makes you feel like, oh, I feel safe to be able to show up and do the work. And yeah. I know that like my fellow actors got my back. So that I think also massively contributes to well, that. I'm sorry. We, no, no, I'm, I'm glad you said that because when you think about jumping in to do the work, I'm gonna say this and I hope that you understand exactly what I mean. It was really cool to see you playing a mom. What was it like for you to play, to step into that role for the first time? Yeah, well, you know, what's interesting is like sometimes you play characters that have similar life experiences to you and mm -hmm. then sometimes they have done things or, uh, you know, gone through certain life that you haven't yet. And obviously motherhood is, is something I haven't. And my proximity to it is I have little nieces and nephews and I feel like they're like my borrowed children. You know, I get to have them and give them back. Give them and, right back. Um, but, but I think, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's kind of special to kind of find your, your entry point as a person to that nurturing spirit. And I think for, for Tashi, it's important for people to see that part of her too, because I feel like, you know, you can often, she comes off very cruel or cold, but, but she is, there is sensitivity to her and there is warmth to her. And you see those little moments when she does have these, these times with her, with her daughter. So it's like just enough to see that she's not just, you know, this- Diabolical. Yeah, right. you know, she's, she's human like, like any other character. It was beautiful. I'm gonna leave you with this because you know, the kids, oh, the kids yeah. have spoken. Met Gala, are they hot or are they cold? Are they oh, hot or so cold? cold? Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> I said, first of all, <laughs> first of all, it's kind of genius. It one. is, it is. Two, um, listen, I don't have all that to work with personally, but I appreciate the the contribution. Is it the sentiment? You know, the sentiment. Um, but I think uh, we might go in a different direction. I'm, I don't know if I we're am, gonna I go am so wearing it. You know. are? That's well, what I'm wearing. Well, yeah. that's why. Or a little disappointed. <laughs> that's what they uh, I'm actually going as the racket. Again, yours keeps the racket. The racket. <laughs> They're going as the balls, uh, yeah. so. That's a great, I love yeah. you so much. You are the bomb. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.